All right, we're going to be talking through concept three notes on evidence for evolution, and these are going to be this. This is going to be the same video for both CP and honors students. So, in general, there are basically five major fields of science that have um, provide evidence for evolution. First is paleontology, which is the study of prehistoric life. Next is biogeography, and that's the study of where living things are located. Embryology is the study of the embryonic development of organisms. Anatomy is the study of structures of organisms. And biochemistry is the study of chemical processes in organisms. So we're going to go through each one and just very briefly highlight some of the evidence that they provide for evolution. And then we'll do some lab stations in class um, that kind of go and we'll explore these a little bit more. So first, looking at paleontology, so our study of prehistoric life, the main thing we're using here is the fossil record, because the fossil record reveals a history of the type of organisms that have lived on Earth, including those that um, were once extinct, and also the ages of those fossils. So, and remember, fossils are remnants of animals, so bones, footprints, feces, etc. And what's really special is transitional fossils. And these are fossils that link extinct species to current species. And they help us piece together the evolutionary history and the connectedness of these different species. Um, one of the most famous fossils of all time is pictured here is Archaeopteryx. And it is the transitional fossil that they have used to link dinosaurs like the pterodactyl um, and other things to modern day birds which is pretty cool. Um, next is evidence in biogeography, or the study of where living things are located. Um, this is really where Darwin got a lot of his information. This was um, studying island species like his tortoises and his finches and his beetles and seeing how they most closely resemble the nearest mainland species. Maybe not species on similar islands on the other side of the ocean. Um, but also how populations can show variation on different environments or excuse me, on different islands as they adapt to their specific environments like da Darwin saw on the Galapagos Island. And so a lot of this points um, to divergent evolution patterns. Um, and they use this a lot to show um, divergent evolution and sometimes even speciation. Embryology, the study of embryonic, uh, embryological development. Um, one of the really cool things we can see from this is if we look at the embryos of vertebrates, we see that they're very similar in appearance early in development, but as they develop in the womb, they grow into different structures in adult form and start to look more and more different. And um, they believe that this suggests common ancestry among vertebrates. And if you have the physical PowerPoint for this, there's a really, really cool link in the notes section. You could also probably Google it. Um, it's on PBS. I believe, and it kind of gives you four different embryos, and you kind of have to guess which organism they are, and it's pretty cool to see how it really is very challenging to guess them, and they suggest that these similarities are evidence of common ancestry. All right, the anatomy is pretty crazy, the anatomical evidence here. So we're basically going to talk through three different types of structures that provide evidence for evolution. First are homologous structures. And these are, have similar characteristics resulting from common ancestry. Organisms that share homologous structures, they have the same kind of internal structure or layout, but different functions. And they have different functions due to divergent evolution and living in different environments. And we believe the greater the number of shared structures between two species, the more closely related the species are. So for example, humans, bats, frogs, cats, whales, and so many other organisms all share the same forearm structure, which we believe suggests evidence of common ancestry. So for instance, this is a picture of a human arm and the different parts labeled. So you have your humerus, you have your radius and ulna on your forearm, you have your carpals, which are the bones right around your wrist, your metal carpals, which are like the part of your fingers that a ring goes on, and then the phalanges, which are the, or ex excuse me, the metal carpals are the part of your hand, um, where you can kind of see the bones, you stretch your hand, and then your phalanges, which are your fingers. And we can see this exact same orientation and layout of bones in the forelimbs of all these other organisms, which is pretty cool. And that suggestion suggests homologous structures and divergent evolution. 
So homologous and divergent, I always think of HD, I watch HD television in my AC in the summertime. So HD, homologous and divergent go together. Another um, structure that is evidence for evolution in the field of anatomy is vestigial organs or vestigial structures. And these are structures with little or no function to an organism, which evolutionarily speaking makes zero sense. And that's because scientists believe they're remnants of structures that once had important functions and ancestors of species, but these organisms have divergently evolved from them and no longer need them. Um, example, ostriches have wings, but they can't fly. So uh, wings are a vestigial structure in ostriches. And so we believe that ostriches evolved from an uh, ancestral bird that did fly. Um, if you have this PowerPoint in the, in the notes section or you can search it on YouTube, there's a really cool four-minute video clip about evidence of evolution in the human body. And it basically just points out some vestigial structures that humans have, which is pretty cool. And last are analogous structures. These are structures that are opposite of homologous. They have similar function, but completely different structure. So it's believed that they evolve similar structures due to living in similar environments. But they have different structures because they have different ancestral, they're not related ancestrally. So we believe they're evidence of convergent evolution. So for example, this owl and this insect both have wings and they both fly because they both live in the sky. But they are not related. Um, they have completely different structures. Owls have bones in their wings and insects do not. And so we believe that they evolved due to convergent evolution. And again, remember my HD television in the AC. So HD, homologous divergent, AC, analogous convergent. That's how I kind of, my silly little way I remember those. Another field of science that provides evidence for evolution is biochemistry. And this is when we're studying DNA and proteins. So the two nuclei, or excuse me, the two macromolecules that we can use to identify who you are. So what scientists can do is they compare the similarities in DNA between organisms and then amino acid sequences in different species to try to see common ancestry. And two closely related organisms will have similar DNA sequences. So for example, we look at the hippopotamus and the humpback whale, and this is just a section of their DNA sequences. You can see there's only a few differences between them, only three letter differences between in this section, which suggests that they're similarly related. Um, humans, we are 98.6% identical to chimpanzees in terms of our DNA, which is pretty crazy. We're only 50% genetically identical to a banana. So that suggests that we're much more closely related to chimpanzees than we are to bananas. And we have a much more recent common ancestor with chimpanzees. We also have pseudogenes, which is pretty crazy. These look like genes. They're just sections of your DNA, but they no longer function. They don't code for any actual genes in you. They're kind of like the vestigial structures of genetics, which is pretty cool. And that is evidence for evolution in five different fields of science.